Hey guys, uh, Agent Rachel Luba here, and I am here with Lisette Carnett, who heads my Latin division at Luba Sports. So anyways, we wanted to come on here and take a few minutes to answer some questions about the status of Yasiel Puig. Uh, a lot of you are wondering why you haven't seen Yasiel um, on a big league team right now, on a big league roster, etc. Unfortunately, I think this largely has to do with a civil lawsuit that was currently filed against Yasiel, and we are in the process of you know, handling it through the justice system. However, things get delayed, and now we're in a situation where the public has now basically convicted him in a sense, even though it's a civil case and all of these things. There's a narrative about him and teams are worried and unsure and not very eager to want to bring him onto their team right now. So to kind of backtrack, when I first signed Yasiel, um, this lawsuit didn't exist. Um, it was actually shortly after that the TMZ report came out and the lawsuit um, was filed. And I was put in a position where I had to make a tough decision because obviously he's a high profile client. Um, when this lawsuit is filed, you know, everyone is talking about it and people are jumping to conclusions. Um, that's a really easy thing to do. Uh, however, the lawyer in me felt it was only right to, you know, look at all the facts of this, hear both sides of the story, and then make a decision. And this is a topic, um, you know, violence against women, things like this, that it, this is not for this video, but that hits close to home for me because of a couple instances throughout my life. I in no way support violence against women. And it's even something that, you know, while in law school, I basically devoted my entire law school curriculum to kind of help me become a baseball agent. However, I spent an entire year in a clinic working with and helping represent victims of uh, human trafficking, sex trafficking, and domestic violence. Again, because it is something that is so kind of important to me and to help women um, in these situations. So this isn't something I took lightly. I looked at everything. And after looking at all of the facts, to me, it was clear that this was an example of somebody who was taking advantage of the system. Right. And it's been tough to stand by it because there's a lot of stuff online saying I'm enabling, you know, and all of these things. And I think the hardest part for me is seeing how nobody bothers to hear his side of the story. And that's why I encourage you guys, uh, the motion that, you know, has been filed on his behalf for this lawsuit, it details his side of the story. And I think it's really important that people kind of hear this side. Now, while I'm very transparent about my day-to-day -day and what I do, and I'm very transparent about, you know, other clients I have, such as Bauer, unfortunately, I can't be transparent about everything that I do. And there are certain things that I'm working on that, like this, where there is a lawsuit, where I can't talk about everything all the time, and I can't um, you know, explain things always. That doesn't mean that we're not working tirelessly on it. And it doesn't mean that, you know, because someone's not explaining it, that there, there must be guilt or anything of the sort. Um, you know, because of the process of the justice system, we've been quiet, hoping that the justice system will, in a timely manner, vindicate Yasiel. But unfortunately, because of COVID-19, some of the delays and then the desire for the other side to kind of come out and really use the media to create a narrative, it's kind of unfortunately almost sealed his fate. And it's something that's become very apparent as I have been talking to teams from day one of representing him that the public has really you know, hurt Yasiel and his reputation and what people believe of him now. And so we've kind of gotten to a point where he's lost everything. And so there's not much else to lose. And, you know, I want, I want to make sure that he doesn't go down without everybody understanding, you know, his side of it and kind of what we're dealing with. Right. I've been with Yasiel for four years. Um, I have been running his foundation, which is the love of his life. Um, he's done so much for every community he, that he's been in. He's, he's, he's that teddy bear that always helps kids. So this really hit hard 
not only for Yassiel, but for the foundation, for everything that he stood for, everything that he put his, his heart and soul in, it just diminished it into nothingness. And I've been waiting for this particular day where I would sit with you and let the public know the real story behind everything that's been going on. Unfortunately, like you said, because of COVID and because of delays in the justice system, we've had to do our part um, and, and help Yassiel uh, sort of wait. And, and we've told him to wait. And his uh, thing, you know, that he says, you know, I've, I've, I trust the justice system. I've been taught like every American to trust it and to, but this has literally taken everything out of me. It's taken everything away um, very unfairly. So Yasiel has gone through a lot to get to this country. You know, he came over to our country. He was human trafficked to our country. Um, you know, he, via Mexico, there was a lot of things that went on. I mean, it's very public. Anybody could read about it, but Yasiel went through so much more than I think any of us could even begin to understand. And that's why, listen, as opposite of Rachel, I'm a lot older. I, I'm very vocal about, you know, being strong women. I have daughters that are raising myself into very strong women. And I don't believe in, you know, being subordinate to any man. That is a big problem for me. So I, to, to stand by and see Rachel and what she's gone through and, you know, like what, what Yasiel has gone through and just have to be quiet has been super difficult. That's why today is so important because we're able to finally, you know, sort of give Yasiel's side of the story and, and, and let people see um, with their own eyes, the evidence that is, you know, uh, to a side that totally exonerates him um, from these lies. And so I, I wanted to make sure that people understood that everything that, that Yasiel has gone through to get here, everything that he fought for. I mean, he was a kid from a farm. He had no education in the sense of, you know, like all the education that people that might have, might, that play baseball here in America might have um, to their benefit. He literally, you know, was barefoot and playing and he grew like Jack the Beanstalk. And that's why he was, um, you know, he became who he was and, and he became the star that he was because they realized that there was a huge talent and an innate, innate talent. Everything that Yasil did was always watched because it was so different. But that's because really when he came here, there was no cultural assimilation uh, of the sort that should exist for players like Yasiel, for Latin players, which is what you're doing so much right now, Rachel, through, through your Latin division to try and help players from, from Latin America and from Cuba and from all different kinds of countries that come here and they have to assimilate on top of being a great baseball player, they also have to assimilate to our culture and what's expected of them. Things like, you know, flipping the bat, kissing the bat, things like that Yasiel did, he was sort of like a veteran of bringing to baseball. Um, that was misunderstood. That was like, what are you doing? You're playing, you're not taking the game seriously. And that's not, that was absolutely not it. And I think so, he came off, he didn't necessarily, there are certain cultural differences that it might have rubbed people the wrong way, you know, how he went about things, how he responded to things, maybe the, or, you know, he didn't respond in the right way, how Americans are used to it. Right. And I think that was, you know, something he's always kind of had to combat and, and, and navigate and nobody's really helped him over the years. I, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it was a big deal when he switched over to female agency that we were able to see him sort of the, you know, the, the mothering aspect of trying to like, look, hold my hand, we'll walk you through this. And, and, and we have more patience to explain to him. Um, even now, you know, this is the way the justice system works. This is what we have to do. Um, but he was very vocal. He's a very vocal person. And, um, and he wanted to speak from the beginning. He was told and he was suggested, you know, and advised through his attorneys not to. And that's what he did. Um, but no more could he take just in the sidelines, uh, watching his career basically go down uh, in flames, which is what's, what this lawsuit has caused. And it's a civil lawsuit. It's not, you know, like you said, it's not a criminal, criminal lawsuit. It's not something that, you know, that there is no investigation from the MLB. Nothing, none of that is happening. Working with him throughout these four years, I've seen so much happen. I run his social media. I've seen so, I have seen so many things happen and come through the social media. People saying to him literally, uh, if you don't give me, you know, a certain amount of money, I'm going to go out and I'm going to say that you did this. I've seen that on a social right. media. People that it is never met, him. never met him, never met him. That's right. It is heartbreaking. And, you know, there are, are you know, there are ploys that he falls for too. Like, you know, you know, my, I have a child that's dying, you know, send me $200 or there are things that, that happen like that all the time with Yassil that he doesn't understand still that this is, he's not, you know, he's, he doesn't know the that bad part of humanity and he's had to learn really quickly um, he's, he's already had throughout the years that he's been here, uh, he has seen that he has to sort of behave differently because, you know, of different cultural aspects 
of America and it's been very hard for him. But this in particular, he realizes and he tells me they're, they're castigating me because I'm different, because I look different, because I look different than everyone else. And right. it's, it's scary. Hurtful. He's a, they're painting him out to be a scary human. And I mean, I've stood next to him and I'm a little person and yes, yes he's a big man. He looks different than me. He doesn't look like me and he's a lot bigger, but I mean, he's, I think one of the best ways you described it, like he, he is solely from Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. I, you told me, I mean, before I had ever met him, like that That's was the, you know, what you described and, and you know, I think that he really does. He has a really good heart and, um, you know, Extremely. He, he tries, he doesn't always get it right, um, but he, he, doesn't. He, he tries. But getting back to it, he is absolutely being judged because of what he looks like. He's absolutely been judged because it is believable to a big portion of America that Yasiel Puig, the way that he looks at a person like Yasiel Puig, because he's big, because he's black, he's able to, he's capable of doing this. Knowing him the way that I know, this has been heartbreaking to stand next to him, knowing that these allegations were there and knowing that he could not open his mouth because he needed to respect the justice system. Knowing that he, I had to tell him, let's, let's wait and let's wait for the right thing to happen. We're gonna wait for our time in court. Knowing that I had to hold him back from, from telling his truth has been the most difficult thing that we have had to do, that you and I have had to do. Yeah. And we have not slept, we have not eaten, we have like done everything. Literally, you have had your job and a whole 24 other hour job that you've been doing um, that people do not see because it's behind the scenes because we're doing the right thing for our client. Yeah, I, I think that part too. I, you know, I think people, um, this idea that, you know, Yasiel has been, people don't care, you know, even his representation doesn't care. I, I right. think when I, uh, we talk several times a day, <laughs> yeah. and we're texting throughout the day. We, Emailing. you know, we're constantly on calls, whether it's with attorneys, whether I, you know, I'm talking teams, trying to come up with a strategy to help him. Um, and, and most, you know, agents, this isn't by at this time in the season, they're not dealing with this. Um, but we, we are dealing with it every day. Um, although it's not something that is, you know, portrayed on maybe my vlog or, you know, what, whatever. Um, it, it's stuff that I, we can't necessarily showcase as much, but we haven't stopped we haven't we barely slept. It's been a heartbreaking process, I think, for all of us, because I don't think any of us thought that, you know, any of this was going to happen and that, you know, he would be put in this kind of position and judged unfairly like this. So, you know, I think it's important for everybody to know that Yasiel hasn't given up on baseball. Nobody on his team has given up on him. No. And we're just hoping that people will, you know, at least listen to his side of the story and at least you know even if it's reading the motion that was filed on his behalf and, and I think it you know it'll be pretty clear you know where where the truth lies on that because at the end of the day uh it was it was easy to believe that a big, big black man could do this nobody else nobody really questioned it oh yeah it must have happened because of how Yasiel is and how he looks you know how he might fight for his teammates <laughs> against a whole other team you know, we've all seen that famous picture with the pirates and him taking on a whole team, but he took on a whole team for another human being. He would never hurt another human being. And that is what I know. That's what I will go down with the ship with because that is something that is the absolute truth. He would never hurt anybody. And the fact that this is happening and the fact that he, it's just one other part that America has to really good, take a good look at themselves and say, what are we doing here? This is a civil suit. This is not a, this is not a criminal suit. This is not a criminal case, but we have basically just executed him really. Look, I think with all of the evidence and his side of the story, I would hope that MLB and MLB teams will look at this and not be so quick to back away from Yasiel based on the public basically convicting him, quote unquote, of something that hasn't even gone through the civil process yet and we haven't even bothered to listen to his side but I'm hoping now that with his side coming out that you know MLB won't cast him away because of you know one narrative that I think we will prove is false because then what what do you do once you see that the reality once you see the truth and everything is out there and oh wow he didn't do it 
then what, what are you left with? You, you, you left, you're left with somebody who should be in baseball that's not, and we need to fix that.